Okay, now we are going to discuss about develop without code. So on this section, we will refresh ourselves. Um, first of all, about the power of metadata. We have discussed this thoroughly, remember, in our admin modules or admin trailheads about the Salesforce platform basics. So I talked in depth about objects, fields, and records and give you a few, another few, pretty a lot of examples on what objects are and how fields related to objects and records. So we are not going to repeat the whole thing again. Please search um, from the admin modules video, search Salesforce platform basics. Uh, look for it and I have discussed about this in depth. So we are just going to refresh ourselves here. So um, here we are talking about metadata, right? So developing in Salesforce would be um, much faster. Why? Because we are tapping into the platform and we don't have to build everything on our own. Like for example, creating this page, this account page, what fields you want to show here, the tabs here, right? And any custom buttons you want to add, things like that, you can tap into the power of the Salesforce platform and just reuse what's already available. So if you want to add more fields, you can just drag more fields here. And if you want to add additional functionality like a Google Maps on here, you can do that as well. So you don't have to recreate everything from scratch with pure line by line code, right? We are tapping on the power of the Salesforce platform in terms of its security, in terms of its standardiz standardization. So everything looks familiar. So any um, Salesforce user flipping from application to application will have a universal look and feel. So they're not confused. So all the applications have a standard, you know, UI look and feel how everything works. So they are familiar. So you're tapping onto those, those power. Also the stability of it. Salesforce is also making sure all your applications have to be scalable. It can, you know, handle lots and lots of data. And when you go into uh, developing Apex code later on, also you have to go through rigorous testing phases to make sure your code are solid. You cannot deploy your code into a production, a live production Salesforce org without making sure that the, the code are really, really, really solid. It's different than just, you know, um, creating a simple web app and you just deploy it on a web server and it's done, right? But Salesforce won't allow any um, holes on your code. So they're making sure of it. So we are tapping into that kind of environment, so to speak. So um, what's inside the dream house? Well, it has a bunch of um, things put together out of the box sales for things and additional things as you can see. Here we have three objects on the Dreamhouse um, app. We have the brokers object, the properties, the favorites, and then we can see how the whole thing is put together. Let's launch our, our hands on org so I can see you. We can take a look together, pop up our hands on org here and launch our developer beginner go to our schema builder we need to log in there and we go to setup you should know this by now and schema builder do you still remember from, from your admin modules how to navigate through the schema builder i hope so so this is displaying everything look at this on the bottom right here you can scroll whoa what is spaghetti there Look at that. That's pretty lame, right? Well, how can you <laughs> look at that? It's like a spaghetti. So 
let's take everything out clear all boom now it's clean so what do you need we want ju we, we, we just want the objects from the um, dream house so brokers properties and favorites so i want to see brokers or broker i check that box and then property check that box and then uh, favorites favorite check that box so you have just three here right um you can scroll there we go there we go that's better and minus it so so now you can drag uh, and see how it all links they should be on the top should be on the bottom so if you want to see how everything relates to each other you can do this using the schema builder so let's zoom up again you can see um the fields on this object the property object it has these fields right so what what type what data type each fields represents and then you can add fields you can rename fields and do all kinds of stuff so we're not going to go through all of that we have done that and um we've done that actually we've played a lot with this schema builder please refer back to your admin um, module that that i've shown thoroughly so let's go back here so that's the schema builder so you can see the object and all the fields there and then you can also do um this is a page um lightning app builder so let's let's launch that up like if i go back to setup here and home lightning app builder lightning so i'm searching here lightning app builder here and then you can open up the property explorer all right so i'm gonna click on that and just add it there so look at that so pretty cool right um what you can do is you can click on a canvas this is the whole canvas and you can drag and drop the modules here or components components so you can drag chatter feet whatever is available or you can um, drag custom components or you can even create your own components you can get more from the app exchange here and then you you load it up and then you can drag it there so we will learn to create components i think that's on the advanced module though not the developer beginner but we will get there so you will have your own custom components you can drag over which is pretty cool so tapping into the power of the salesforce platform is pretty much this so you don't see code here right well eventually you would want to be able to create components which is all codes but if you want to tap into the development power of salesforce you don't have to like if you just want to finish as a beginner or intermediate uh, not much of a code you can just use whatever is available on the salesforce ecosystem the app exchange and just use what people already built as long as you understand logic basic logics and yeah we can you can you can start using it right so that's development without code or low code same thing with process builders flows you would have to understand logic but you will be saving tons and tons of time you know um not writing codes not writing line by line codes so if i go back here and i'm just gonna go back here and if i want to show you the ape the apex cl classes triggers and stuff like that we must have something on the playground you can see you can also see um how it looks like for example let's check out the bigger size here einstein vision controller you can add it there and you can also go to developer developer console from here well if we are ahead of our our um you know trail but we will also launch this and play around with developer console so this is the the code the code we will actually be writing later on right you can do any kinds all kinds of stuff you wanna you wanna code but the point of salesforce is we want to avoid doing everything with codes 
This takes maybe a few days to complete if you're a beginner, right? Trying to understand and construct a really solid code. But you can also just use the, the process builder or the flow or the workflow or the lighting app builder, right? You don't have to write everything with code like that, right? You get you get what, what they mean? So develop with low code. But eventually when you go to the advanced module and you want to deploy um, really, really powerful application, you will eventually need to tap into the power of the Apex code, which is fun if you like, you know, development, which is <laughs> a ton of fun, okay? So that's pretty much it. So um, low code or no code, and you can build um, all kinds of applications without writing a single line of code for real. So you can just use the power of the, the Salesforce um, Lighting App Builder and uh, page layout, you know, stuff like that. And you can make an application out of it ready to be deployed to other Salesforce orgs. We will actually do just that throughout the developer beginner, developer intermediate and advanced. You will definitely deploy some serious fun code. All right. So let's do the quiz. I've already answered it. What's the relationship between objects, fields, and records and Salesforce relational database? So the answer is they are an abstraction of the underlying table structure. So objects is the table. If you're um, familiar with databases like MySQL, PostgreSQL, um, various Amazon, AWS databases, well, the objects represents the table. The fields represents the columns, the records, the rows, pretty simple, right? So they are an abstraction of the underlying table structure. How does the metadata driven architecture support declarative development? It allows the platform to auto generate basic components for your org's customizations like dialogues, forums, right? So for example, you want to make a forum to, to create a new property or something. Right, you can just uh, create a new action. Let me give you a uh, real, you know, if you go to here, oh, we already have the setup here. And if I go to object and I'm gonna make a new forum, for example, a new action, um, property, right? Property, property here, property. And then you can create an action here, right? A new action. Remember, we've done this on the admin as well. Create a record. The target object is what? Um, you know, we're getting ahead of ourselves. I don't want to confuse you with all these examples. So let's skip this for now. We've done that before, but we will be doing that again. So with that, let's finish up the quiz and get our 100 points. Boom. And I'll see you on the next video. Bada bim, bada boom. Hit that subscribe button and explore new trailhead grounds and learn to implement the most useful and popular apps on the Salesforce app exchange. And do yourself a favor, like this video and you'll be surprised on how much more you understand when watching this same video after liking it. Don't take my word Watch this one more time after you like the video and see it for yourself. Bada bing, bada boom.